hands. You guys definitely want to see this part, so cycle it on. Let me kill the light on the camera so you can get the full effect. What's up, everybody? Today's video, we're working on the Dodge Viper. We are getting it prepped and ready to be supercharged. And in order to do that, we have some work to take care of and some things to install before it's finally ready for some boosts. So if you guys haven't seen the last video, we pinned the crank with the row kit. So we had the row pin kit pinned the crankshaft so that our harmonic balancer and our pulley is not going to spin on the crank. And now we are working on the gauges. So I have a auto meter gauge pod, single gauge pod we're going to be putting on. And I have a AEM wideband O2 sensor, uh, the newest edition as of the making of this, this video where it's kind of a shallower gauge, which is pretty cool. And it comes with, of course, the Bosch sensor, all the wiring. So I picked this up slightly used. It's barely used, but uh, I saved some money on it, so why not? So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna wire this up. I'm gonna use an existing O2 sensor bung. So that's what I'm gonna do on this one. I'm gonna screw it in, and uh, we're gonna just run the cable back up, and then we'll install our single gauge pod right there on steering column. So we got some work to do. Let's go ahead, get this up in the air. We'll get the sensor on first and then we'll work on the wiring. All right, so the car's up in the air and you can see right here, we've got our wideband O2 sensor plugged in and just swung the factory O2 sensor out of the way right there. Ran it across with the bundle of existing wires all the way to over here. And you can start to see everything around this area has heat shielding on it like there where we have to go. So you also see right there where we're gonna cut across and you can see probably in that little, hopefully you can see right there, you can see the heat shielding as it makes its way across over to that uh, electrical area. So I don't want this to melt. So I have this product here. So it's a sleeve and you can see here, it's Coolit Thermotech and it says it works up to 2000 degrees. I don't think we're ever gonna see that much, but uh, we're gonna slip this over top of our wire so that it doesn't melt over in that area. So, cause it's probably the only thing we're gonna have to run in that area for all this heat. So uh, we wanna make sure we're not gonna have issues in the future. So I'm gonna slip this over the wire and then we'll run it over to where we gotta go and we can put the car back down finally. Probably the easier way is to do something like this. Get yourself a coat hanger or one of these like fishing rod type deals and just pass it through. Otherwise, it might take you a lot longer than you want. So you can see how fast we're getting it on here this way because trying to just force it through the other way, we would have been here a while. So there we go, our wire's through. Okay guys, so I got it routed where I want. I put a little zip tie, if you can see there, on the end of the heat wrap so it doesn't slide, so it's positioned. And I put a couple tie wraps around the actual wire harness so it's not gonna move. Follows the factory uh, clutch line right there with the heat wrap, you can see there. And then it goes underneath here and across. So now we can finally go back up top. Okay guys, so we've got our wire headed in. I did a pretty good job on hiding it and I tucked it in with the boot that goes around the clutch master cylinder. And then coming over here, uh, so the wire's in the cab here. But I have this auto meter gauge pod and I think I'm two for two boys because the original one I didn't like it, the one that went over here. Uh, I didn't really like the fitment and the fact that this is like almost like a fiberglass type thing. I didn't want to screw into that to adhere it. And this one, it's, I don't know who thought of designing it this way, but if I turn this down, it'd probably be a better way to illustrate it. So they put this right here so close that when you put the gauge in the steering wheel when it turns bumps the gauge so it's kind of a stupid design they should have put this a little bit further back because the depth of my gauge by the time i put it on here the steering wheel bumps it so i can't even install it and the other thing too is since this is an overlay uh they should have trimmed it further back, the back of the steering wheel actually does touch this. So you kind of hear this like rubbing noise now, just ever so slightly, but still um, not something you want to do over an extended period of time. So I'm going to see what I come up with. I might have to get a different gauge pod to fix this, but either way, we'll keep running it and getting everything sorted out as far as our wiring. 
Okay guys, so it's the next day and I was doing some thinking and a bit more research on uh, trying to figure out this whole gauge pod scenario. So after doing a bit of research, the, the you can get one that you can essentially buy like the, one of these pods and you know stick it or screw it to something like a universal one. But the problem is it's a lot longer and we're not working with much room and you'll notice that this one cuts off fairly abruptly. And the reason being that when you tilt the steering wheel, since it's uh, pretty small in that interior, when you tilt it, it doesn't smack your dash here. So um, I think what I'm going to do after thinking about it is just modify this one to work. And what I'm going to end up doing is I went and picked up, I don't know, for some reason I didn't own one of these, pretty basic tool, but I just didn't have one of these. Rather than use power tools, I'm going to saw it here cut it across the bottom and I'm going to cut out about a quarter inch of this and bring this whole thing back and then I'm going to have to mold this shape back to it. The reason why I'm doing all that is I feel like that's probably a better idea because if I tried to just buy one single universal pod it's going to be super long and I'm going to have to modify it and then I'm going to have to try to screw it uh, to my you know uh, steering column you know cap anyways so might as well just use this and do the same thing with it and then I don't have to screw anything to it same as this current situation right now so I'm gonna mess with it modify it hopefully I don't wreck it because it's a stupid thing it's like 60 bucks for this piece of plastic but uh, it's the most suited let me get to work I'll show you guys what I end up with okay so there's my straight cut there which is what I was trying to achieve. So now I'm going to cut out about a quarter of an inch because I want it to sit around there. So that's my plan. That way everything clears. So this is exactly what I wanted. So this chunk is gonna get removed. This is gonna get moved back to that line there. So. I'm gonna take my little saw and buzz the bottom of this off now. All right, so you can see that's the strip that I'm going to take out and I might be able to flatten this with the heat gun to make up for this little gap that I'm gonna have here in the front and where I'm gonna to have to mold that piece there. So it should get interesting, but so far so good. And let me get my little air saw and I'm gonna cut all the bottom section. Alright guys, this is coming out a lot better. Well, not that I should say than expected, but look at that fitment. It just butts right up against there nicely. As you can see there. And I can almost just super glue this together probably. Like the fitment is so clean, it is insane. Even on the back, you can probably see in there, fitment is just beautiful with that bandsaw or hacksaw. And I'm thinking about trying to flatten this out and maybe sticking that in there or I might just use some resin fiberglass uh, Bondo and just kind of shape this in and then I might uh, Try to plastic weld it. We'll see and uh, we'll start getting this shaped up Probably not a bad idea to wear some gloves that I'm not doing right now, but I would definitely advise because look at that. Pretty much got a relatively straight piece of plastic there. And then we'll have our little piece for in here that we can try to melt into place. And right now I got this uh, soldering iron with this flat uh, tip that I'm gonna try and just see if I can, you know, melt, as you can see there, and melt some little areas and see how she goes. I'll be the first to admit that I don't know what I'm doing, but it seems to be working. So I'm just using this, kind of letting it melt and moving it around a little bit. And then I'm going to use that other strip I have since it's the same kind of plastic, but this will just kind of get it holding for now. I'm just kind of along my seam here, melting it. And obviously this isn't going to be a finished product. We're going to have to put some Bondo or whatnot on it to smooth it all out. but. This is going to be pretty interesting. This 
let it cool, but boy, she's solid. That's hilarious. That's so cool. I didn't know you could do that like that. All right, so check out how that came out, you guys. We got both sides plastic welded, and she is super strong. Look at that. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just plastic weld this into place as well since it seems to work. So I'm going to do the same thing, plastic weld both sides and then we'll see where we're at. Okay boys, here's the current progress. So it almost like looks like a weld. You sit there and you just go around and kind of just push it in till it melts a little bit into the surface and like this thing is not going anywhere. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the back side, and then we got a bit of a gap here to fill, no big deal. I'll use some of this plastic and kind of just weld it all together as you see, and then we're gonna have to make it pretty after this, of course. I've got the inside all plastic welded as well, and she is solid. Now I'm gonna have to flow some of this into here and weld the back side and the two ends. So let's go. And it just flows off of whatever you're taking it off of and then you just shape it to where you're making it land like that we'll have to sand everything for sure after this but all right guys there she is plastic welded both sides inside outside strong as heck so I'm gonna have to start sanding this and then uh, we're gonna have to do some Bondo and get all prepped. So I'm gonna fast forward to all that, but at least you guys know what I did to achieve this and she is solid. Okay guys, so after a bunch of sanding, this is where we ended up and it's pretty dang close. Only thing is I did raise this up just a little bit. Uh, I didn't flush it up completely. So, cause otherwise if I had just left that, we probably could have just uh, filled in a couple of things and painted it but I wanted to lift it up a little bit because I wanted to make sure that the bottom of my gauge was going to clear the bottom there so I had to kind of lift it up a little bit just to make sure that it had that room because for whatever reason also the faces of the gauge would have been you know trying to hit there so I had to lift it up a bit anyways I got some bondo here so I'm going to just build this little ridge over so just a lick of bondo there and just a couple small holes and um or not necessarily holes, but just little divots that you can see there visibly, and uh, should be almost ready to go. So I'm gonna mix up just a tiny little bash, give it a lick there, we'll sand it, and then we should be ready to paint this thing. Alright, literally hours later sanding and shaping and I finally have this thing ready for paint. So I know it's a little bit ugly with some of these you know, different color stuff. We got the Bondo here, got a bit of glazing putty for a few pinholes. But she's all ready to go. I'm going to air this down, uh, wax and tar, wax and grease remover, the whole thing. And then we're going to hit it with some paint and uh, we'll let it dry and finally we can get back to business. Okay, so it's a few days later and I went ahead and painted it and this is the end result. So came out really good and <clears throat> I'm just debating whether to install it just yet because um, the instructions on the can of paint do say that it takes a, a few days longer to dry to, on plastic. So uh, I might try to install it very carefully or I might just wait. The other thing I did do, um, so obviously you guys can see the gauge fits now, it's flush, it's not protruding into the steering wheel area, which was the whole reason for doing that. And that LED I installed right here, it's one of these little LEDs, and I got the wire running out the back. So that's going to be for the methanol injection kit, and it actually illuminates blue, which I can show you guys right here. If I just put it to 12 volts, it actually looks pretty cool. So when we put 12 volts to it, we get this nice blue light. It illuminates there, it's not gonna flash, it'll be solid like that. But that's gonna be when our meth hits, it's gonna illuminate right there just to let us know we're spraying meth. So it's gonna be kind of cool. So that's the situation and I'll show you guys the wiring. It's really, really small to get in here, you guys. So as you can imagine, um, I did take out this kick plate so that I could get the wires up and running to here. I used a fuse tap, which you can see right there. 
on a switched ignition source and then the last one had to go to ground so it's pretty much it the rest of it's plug and play into the gauge i just gotta put that cap back on and then we can put this thing back together so it's a couple days later and this thing is ready to go in it did say like i mentioned five to seven days for that paint to fully cure but i'm getting a little bit impatient i just want to get together if i have to uh, touch this up later i'll can always take it off and touch up the paint but um she's in here and i've got my double-sided tape as you can probably see on the underside barely if not trust me you can see double-sided tape i kind of just went around the perimeter and you have to hook it around your tilt steering and then you also have to push down your four-way stop to get this thing to go down and i am just gonna you know tie up all the excess slack underneath there uh, once I get this down, I'm going to kind of just get rid of the, the excess slack in the back. So let's set this thing down and see what she looks like. Here we go. I'm just pulling off all the double-sided tape. I've got my wires all connected in the back. So it's just the two, two uh, plug-ins. So one's going to go to your power source and all that from the gauge. The other one goes directly to the O2 sensor. And then my third one is for my uh, light for my meth that I showed you, the meth kit. So here we go, we're gonna push our four-way button down so we can get over the top, and then we're just gonna tuck it behind this little glow ring here. Okay guys, so it's installed. I'm gonna wait a couple more days before I really manhandle that thing and get that into, into position. It does, here let me turn off the dinghy for a second. It does call for putting, you know, four little screws to hold it, so if it's pretty good, the only thing is I can hear it kind of just barely still touching right here when I turn the wheel. So I would like to kind of push it back a little bit, but like I said, I'm going to give it a couple more days to dry before I do that. But she looks pretty good overall. I'm liking the way she looks. And you guys definitely want to see this part, so cycle it on. Let me kill the light on the camera so you can get the full effect. That's pretty cool gauge, you guys. So this is that O2 sensor heating up. So it goes through its heat up stage before it starts reading. So obviously it's full lean because the engine's not running, but that's about it, you guys. I'm gonna tuck up the wires underneath and put that kick panel in and we're done. All right guys, so that's gonna be a wrap for today's video. If you did enjoy it or found it informative, make sure you give it a thumbs up for me. It does help support the channel. Also, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for more content like this on Vipers, Dakotas, Rams, all kinds of vehicles, and we're not stopping there. And check out the merchandise down below. You guys can support your boy by clicking on those links down below, checking out some boosted merch, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching. We're gonna have this thing boosted pretty soon.